Uh, you also dispel, dispel some uh, misconceptions, one of which I guess is the where Legos come from. Um, you want to talk about that? Talk about the well, origins? How many in the audience think that Legos That's are, a good an, question. are yeah. an American invention? Oh, good. None. We have a savvy uh, where, where, where are Legos? How many think where it's uh, Swedish? Closer. All right, it's Denmark. <laughs> um, easy to make that mistake for some. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the company was uh, uh, founded in uh, Billund, Denmark. And uh, we have a, a fun uh, history section in there with uh, animation. Uh, we wound up bringing on uh, an animator, a minifig character that became our through line through all this, through the whole film, because it's really a large number of short stories that are all intertwined together. Right, and, and that, that minifig is voiced by Jason Bateman. You're, yeah, you're... Jason Bateman is our voice, who's absolutely perfect for it. He's funny, he's snarky, you know, he has uh, all the great qualities of a, a minifig should have. So what were the biggest surprises to you all? Like what, what Lego sub-subculture astonished you the most? Well, as a, as a scientist, you uh, can probably appreciate in the film, the, the, there's some math involved, and the idea that um, it's a closed system, it's, it's finite, and you think of there's only a few ways that a couple of Lego bricks can fit together, which is true, but the fact is that, that um, we have a scientist in the film, we have a, a, a Danish mathematician who's who his big task was to figure out how seven of these bricks can interlock. And, uh, and ultimately he figured that out and finally he figured out how many eight could be. What was the number on eight? Well, I think he failed on eight. He failed on eight. Uh, unfortunately on for eight. him, <laughs> because he was very obsessive and I think he, after seven, he kind of lost track. That's right, another mathematician yeah. figured out eight and now nine, they figure there's not enough computing power in the world to figure out how many ways these yeah. can fit together, which just goes to show there's an infinite number of possibilities, like, like something like the English language or the musical scale. It's a finite system, but there's an infinite ways to express yourself with that system. You well, know, it wasn't it? Was uh, the original calculation was for six bricks, right? And it was something like nine plus it was, million. It was nine hundred and fifteen million Incredible. combinations for six bricks. But it just goes to show you as to why this is uh, such a popular tool for people to use. Well, it's interesting too. Yeah. So does that is that why Lego is so compelling? Is it all the possibilities? For sure. Yeah. I mean, look, it's uh, anything is possible. And even if you fail, you still succeed. There's no such thing as a bad build. You know, this is coming from your own imagination. And I came to find, too, just in, uh, you know, seeing my own son and how he's evolved now with Lego, and he's seven, that his builds get better and better and better. And the confidence building that it, that it gives a young child is more valuable than anything that, than I've been able to see for, for a kid in playing with toys. It's interesting, also, you, the film addresses how at, at uh, Lego, the company made some stumbles along the way, and maybe, tell me if I get this right, but the basic idea was, and I'm, I remember seeing this and being, thinking this was a mistake, of course, not that I'm a corporate genius or anything, but that they went from these generic tools that you allow you to do anything to these programmatic recipe sorts of kits. So talk about that, if you would, what, and what happened with that? Why, why did they do that, and why did they go away from that? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's, it's hard to believe that the, the biggest toy company in the world, even just over a decade ago, was on hard times. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with losing their way and doing more, more uh, sets with specific pieces that needed less assembly. And uh, it was really the interactions with the community that helped bring them out of that. It said, you have this very elegant, simple product that's so infinitely flexible that you sh that it was the community that kind of pushed back on that and made them realize, I mean, I think for, such, for a big company, they were very introspective and, and I, they in the film said that at that time we were probably arrogant as a company and they've in, in a lot of ways learned their ways and they're bigger than ever.